why you shouldn't split test. Guys, Kim Barrett here from Your Social Voice and today I want to talk to you about why you, yes you, shouldn't be split testing. Now, to start off with, I want to make sure that for anyone out there that doesn't understand, I want to talk about what split testing is. Because sometimes people like to throw around these words and they want to throw around these things that they're going to do, but they don't actually know what they're doing or why they're doing it. So, let's start at the beginning. Split testing is kind of what it sounds like, where you are literally, you have one thing, right? Let's talk about an ad, a landing page, ad copy, ad images, whatever it might be, and you're test testing. You're testing them and testing them at the same time to see which one performs better. It's also known as A-B testing or variant testing, where you have one page, one ad, and you're testing it against another to see what's working and what's not, or which one's going to perform better. So this can be done on your ad. Like I said, you can split test out the ad image, the ad copy, the ad headline, or you can have a completely different landing page as well, where you can reposition the offer, you can change the headline, you can change the imagery on there. You can do a lot of different variants, a lot of different testing. Now, am I saying that this is bad? No, I'm not saying that this is bad. What I'm saying is though that you probably shouldn't be doing it. I'll tell you why in just a moment. But when should you split test? You should split test when you have the volume that warrants it, right? And this also falls into the point of why you shouldn't split test. Because what most people do is they hear that there should be split testing or there should be A-B testing. And what they do is they go out and they go, okay, cool, I'm gonna do 20 different ad variations, six different landing page variations. I'm gonna get all the info. And really they don't have enough traffic, they're not spending enough money to warrant it. So what you should be doing is looking for, okay, cool, am I getting more than 100 clicks per day to my landing page? Yes or no? If yes, then yes, you can do a split test. Yes, you can do a variation. Am I spending more than one, three, five hundred dollars per day, 100, 300, 500 dollars per day on my ad campaigns? If yes, then it warrants potentially split testing. Right, but if you're doing it, if you're spending 20 bucks a day and you have one landing page and you get 10 clicks a day, you should not be split testing because you don't have enough traffic running through to give you enough data. And that's where it really comes down to it. Split testing works when you have the data to warrant the tests. But if you're spending five, 10, 20 dollars a day, it just doesn't work, it doesn't make sense. So that's why I'm saying you shouldn't be split testing because a lot of people hear that they should do it and they go out and they try and do all these variants when they don't have the budget or they don't have the traffic to attribute to it. Then as soon as you do, then yes, go all by all means start there. However, most people start and they want to split test everything. I want to split test as I said before, my ads, my images, my headlines, my copy, my call to action, the call to action button, 10 different things. Now, if you refer back to one of our previous videos we've done, which is on the NOC method, the niche offer copy, yes, they are all important, but I would spend my first piece of time, if I know I'm getting leads coming through, right? People clicking on my ad, they're going to my landing page and getting details and getting data come through. I would be testing, the first split test that I would do is on the audience. It's going, okay, cool. Am I using number one, lookalike audiences? Number two, am I using Facebook's own inclusion and exclusion targeting? Now, what does that mean? Well, when you have audiences, you can generally put them together in buckets by interest groups, by different things, and you can start to refine the audience down. You know, if you ever looked at a Venn diagram where you've got the beautiful or the hedgehog concept where you've got these overlaying circles and in the middle is that sweet spot, that's what you want to do with your ads. That's what you want to do with your audiences is put together the different interest groups. So it might be ones about travel and lifestyle. On the other side, it might be around being a business owner. You want to get that segment in the middle, which is the, is the inclusion targeting. You want to have the travel and lifestyle and the business ones overlapping each other, coming together. And that's where you're going to find your most ideal audience. That's where it's really going to come together nice and tightly so that when you start to promote your ads, it's going to a really tight, succinct audience. That's the second thing that you should be doing when it comes to it. And then thirdly is separating out males and females. If you have a big enough audience size, 100,000 or above, separate out males and females and see how they perform. See the differences that happen when you have a male campaign and a female campaign. You'll be very surprised at how well females respond versus males respond when you have a dedicated landing page for each as well. Like we have a client at the moment who's running a campaign, males and females, and females is by far outweighing the males getting registrations for a live event for less than $10, but the males are costing more than 
double the price, same audience, only difference is male and female. And they're going to landing pages that are succinctly set up for them as males and females, right? Interesting, but you wouldn't really be able to tell that until you get enough data through, until you start to split test things out. These guys spend tons of money on their ads, so now it warrants them separating these campaigns out. But just by separating those audiences, first, before you even get into testing the ads, that is where you start to see some magic happen. That is where you really see things happen. So step one is first of all, test your audiences. Then step two, split test your ads. That's where I would focus next. And the easiest and the, and the fastest win is the same ad copy and headlines and just split test video versus image. Video versus image is the next one that I would recommend split testing on. Then when you do that, you say, what does my audience respond to? A lot of people say video is the best, video is king, blah, 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 which I agree to, but sometimes a simple image ad works better than a video. Because one click, boom, they've gone through to your landing page, and the other one they click, they play the video, it starts, they get interested, then they click through. There's a few more hurdles for people to jump through, a few more things for them to do. So I'd highly recommend testing out video versus still image, All right? That's the next thing. Then what I would do before I test any of the copy or anything like that is I would test my placements, right? Back in the targeting section, which is looking at Instagram, audience network, Facebook, but where on Facebook? Right column, newsfeed, uh, messenger, all these different options that you have, you wanna be really, 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 really specific because each one looks different, right? Instagram and Instagram stories look different to messenger and Facebook newsfeed. So you can't expect to run the same thing and get tremendous results. It ain't gonna happen, right? So that's what you need to think about all the things that you test and measure along the way. Then after you've tested all those things, then you can go and do split tests on your landing page, right? Again, if you're getting that amount of traffic, you're getting good volume of leads come through, then you can start to test there and see if you can improve and really scale up those results. But until you do that, until you have a volume of traffic coming through, I don't recommend going for it because what's going to happen is you're going to be sprinkling 50 cents on two little audiences and you're not going to get enough data. And then you say Facebook ads don't work, Kim sucks, doesn't work, right? That's generally what happens. I know how this works, guys. I know you, right? So if you are spending that amount, then yes, please do split test, track and measure, see what's going to work best. But if you're not, if you're spending those volumes, then I highly, highly, highly recommend just to focus on getting that niche right in front of the right offer and written in a way that entices them to take action, then you'll be successful with your ads. As soon as you have that campaign sorted, you've used the NOC method, your niche, your offer, your copy, then go forward and test, then go forward and measure, then go forward and scale your ads up. But until that point, focus on getting a consistent process that generates you leads ongoingly, on demand, on tap, then go forward, then start to scale things up and out. Hopefully this has been helpful for you too and for you and now you can see why you need to not scale, right? Not split test until you get things right. Okay? Until next time guys, I'm Kim. You've been awesome. Comment down below and let me know what you thought. Like the video, give me a little cheeky thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you see this first before anyone else. Until next time, I'm Kim Barrett. You've been awesome. Adios.